Hey, it's Dry Bear. And the Dragon's Dogma 2 character creator has been out for a couple of days, so today I wanted to go through all of the best and worst looks that we've seen from the online communities. We'll range from some really awesome character designs, some public figures you might recognize already, and then some I don't even know. Horrors unleashed upon humanity that shouldn't see the light of day? And I'm gonna do my best to mix it up so we keep a nice pace as we go through the video. A cool feature about Dragon's Dogma 2 is it's actually going to be released alongside Starfield. <laughs> this is Todd Howard and it's surprisingly well made. It's even got his look down. That look of disapproval when you don't buy Skyrim. But someone has also managed to create Alita Battle Angel. Some attempts at Baldur's Gate 3 characters like Asterion, the beloved half-elf Shadowheart, one, two, which I can't really tell what she's looking at here. And there has been many, many attempts at Bay Zell. Some that I think pulled it off pretty nicely considering the availability for the squash and stretch on the face. Some that got the jawline just about right, but the other proportions seem a little bit strange. And some that are just happy to be here. I think this Daenerys Targaryen looks awesome and they did a great job capturing her aesthetic. And they've got some pretty cool Targaryen vibes across the board. I think Gandalf's a nice addition too, especially if you're going to have a caster in your party, you may as well have the gray beard. This one kind of reminds me of like a Gandalf slash Dumbledore hybrid, but it's in the right vein. Someone snapped a candid shot of Mike Tyson on his way to fight Jake Paul. The Beast Trent have some pretty cool customizations as well, and there's actually not as many of these online as I thought there were going to be, but there are some cool presentations. You have two different fur options for them, and some of them definitely look like if they were to lick up some milk, it would get stuck in their beard. The fur overall looks great and some of the treatments like the scars and the tattoos and the actual markings do make a pretty interesting impact on the way the fur is presented. Some of them have some very unique looks to them and I come, I sometimes feel like they're in a costume versus actually being a beast room. I think that comes down to how far you can stretch the proportions. There's some pretty cool classes that you could make for the beast room as well and the presentations I think could match them nicely and they have a pretty interesting range of expression as well. Though I'm surprised I haven't seen any Elden Ring Malekiths. Maybe they're out there, but I just haven't run into any presentations for that yet. And some of them are just way too fluffy. And you can see what I mean by how the presentation of the markings appear on the fur, depending on what kind of fur you choose and where they line up. Because you would think that a tattoo like this on top of fur wouldn't present as well as it does here. But I guess with the short fur version you have for the Beastrin, it does show up quite nicely. And I can imagine they went through a lot of iteration to make markings like this show up on the fur while still showing the visuals of the fur itself. <laughs> Someone made Curious George, or I guess this is a monkey. I feel like this is the Beastrin version of Hide the Pain Herald. He seems really depressed. And they give you a lot of freedom with the posture and representation of the bones and how things spread out with the muscle structure in between, because there's just... Honestly, the new Incredible Hulk movie is looking fantastic. Such a powerful character. If he ever gets a hold of you with his one tooth, you're done for. This reminds me of in the cartoons where the character swallows something whole and you can see the shape of the food going down their throat. And I think this is supposed to be the emote of Keck W. <laughs> and suddenly I just don't feel safe anymore. I, I don't... I... I need assistance. The physical embodiment of never skipping leg day. And then Street Fighter's Blanca if he was actually a fruit that was left out to rot for too long. But that's not all that's possible. Some people are making some very interesting and attractive characters that I think show some really wide ranges of the human body. And they must have gone through so much work to try and represent different nationalities, bone structures, hair types, and everything in between. You can play a lot around with the proportions of the face and of the neck and the preparation representation of where those things align with each other and that plus the different color ranges and makeup op options even if you use the same hairstyles in the same place can make some pretty different looks and the lighting makes a big difference too so i imagine that a lot of these characters and pawns are going to make some really interesting and fun cutscenes in your own playthrough especially if we start seeing more cutscenes that involve actual moving of the mouth like dictation showing the dialogue that's happening and in the right lighting, some of these characters don't even seem like video game characters. Like, they really, really, really don't seem like video game characters. There's a lot of people that have gone through some fantastical races like goblins, orcs, gnomes, dwarfs. This one kind of makes me feel like it's Handsome Piccolo from Dragon Ball. But you definitely got some Lord of the Rings, Shadow of Mordor style goblins in the mix as well. 
some other kinds of goblins. This one even reminds me of a goblin from Baldur's Gate 3 as well. Or a goblin from, uh, well, you, you, you know what I'm getting at. Some of them really got the gnome aesthetic down as well. And you can even blend this, I think, with a taller character to maybe look for like a wizard or a warlock kind of presentation. You can even make some of the more well-known wizard type characters in fantasy universes from around media. Someone even made a robot. Just like an android kind of look that's just, boy, just gloriously incandescent, shiny and chrome. There's a character for you if you just really hate the Saiyan monkeys and you don't like Kakarot. I think this is supposed to be Frieza. There's also some really good representations of more public figures. I think this one has a similar striking to Christian Bale. This one looks pretty darn close to Ian McShane. A young Jake Gyllenhaal, of course. Wake the fork up, samurai! Keanu Reeves. <laughs> Nicolas Cage, if you feel like stealing the Declaration of Independence. And depending on where you live, you could actually be playing Putin's Dogma 3. This one's pretty close to Ryan Gosling as well. Plus some striking resemblances to Timothy from the Dune movies. Plenty of different takes that take a different presentation of the bone structure and expression, and some with their own spin on top of it all. By Starfield. There's an extensive collection of characters that are just kind of normal characters that are custom creations by people that I think have a cool look, and again represent the wider range of ethnicities and visual looks. But depending on the vocation that you choose and how you set up your character, I think you can really create some fun, unique vibes. Some of them even look like they're straight out of Game of Thrones. And the clothing that they have from their vocation makes a big difference too. And keep in mind, we're just looking at the starting gear. If it's anything like the first game, there's gonna be a lot of different gear that you can get throughout the game. Some that are gonna be better. If you can make duplicates like you could, like the, the forgeries like you could in the first game, you can create some really interesting looks. And even after the wide gambit of WTFs that we've seen, some of the normal characters look pretty good. The detail in the hair and the eyelashes makes a big difference. And they seem to have a decent selection of eyes too, which as we know, can make a character look very, very different. Scars, tattoos, body hair, makeup, and the level of sheen. I'd follow this guy into battle. Probably not her though. Some have really big eyes and some have some crazy looking eyes. Even the jawline makes a difference. Some assure you that it's not just a phase and some you wish they would stop looking at you that way. Like seriously, man, I don't know you. He seems pretty chill though, I'd hang out with him. <laughs> and uh, uh, yeah, uh, I don't, I don't even know. I, I don't, I don't even know. Do you think if he fell backwards, he would bounce back up? Is pickle red? <laughs> this is kind of how I feel right now. <laughs> and then there's this thing. Yeah, hot mama jama. And I don't, I don't know, I don't know why there's hands there. And once again, he's just happy to be here. Then there's the one that stands the pinnacle of all creation with this great treasure. Escanor looking pretty tough. Nowhere near as Shrek's Farquad though. Mistress Freeren with her sharp green eyes. And about 10,000 different Geralts from The Witcher. As well as Guts from Berserk and Guts from Berserk, and Handsome Squidward. Take your pick on which one you like more. This is either a take on Joker or it's Kefka. Some people even made the Kenjaku or Getu visual from JJK, complete with the scar across the forehead. You got young Kratos, sad Kratos, and Leon S. Kennedy in about a thousand different formats. You have to wonder if they put that hair in just for him. This guy kind of reminds me of Leroy from Tekken. And then the Sorcerer Supreme slash Mimic Tier slash Android that stares deep into your soul. Some very good representations of Devil May Cry's Nero. That hairstyle fits him so perfectly. I can't decide if this is Reed Destro from My Hero Academia or if it's Nigel Thornberry. Geralt. I don't know if this is intentional or not, but he's definitely remind me of Serosh from Elden Ring. If he were an actual beastrin and wasn't just attached to Godfrey's arm. Geralt. 
Poor Siri, I guess. Solid snake. Dun, dun, dun. And then the fastest pawn alive. If you put this pawn in your party, you won't be able to see them zip by. The creator allows for vampires, witch looking characters, zombies, more zombies, as well as tons of characters that I think I would like to get to know. They're just very unique and very well represented. Distinguished and interesting and a mix of all the different options you have available inside the creator. And the fidelity looks pretty great too. So the question is, which one of these is your favorite? Let me know down below. If you found value in today's video, leave a like down below, leave a comment for the algorithm to help this video get seen by more people. And don't forget to check out my other channels for other content and other stuff and other things.